I was approached today and I was asked a question about hexachromium, if I'm getting it right. Excellent. What's our status on that? And I was led to believe that we only have a certain amount of time before uh, that we can apply for the grants to take care of it. Yes, please. Okay, so we've been working on that for you know a little bit of time now. Um, as you know, the hexavalent for the EPA, which is the national level, is at 100 parts per billion. Uh, the state of California had it even lower in half at 50, and they, and just a few years ago, lowered it to 10. You know, and so, so the water has not gone up, but we're, we have to comply now because it's now below the, uh, or above the MCL. We're at about, what, 12? Yeah, our average between all three wells is 13, 14. About 13, 14. So it's not, it's not too far over, and it's way below what the national is and everything. So when it comes to the grants, the state of California with the water boards, we are working on an arsenic grant of, um, of not we have an arsenic problem, but there was a number of mutuals within the district that uh, are small homes, you know, and, and small wells. And the state had approached us numerous years ago, back 2009 is when the grant was first written, um, to take over those mutuals to help them with their water quality and just absorb them into the district. So as part of that, when we, when we approached them with the grant money for the chromium, they took some of the chromium stuff and merged it together with the arsenic. And our engineer now is applying for the engineering part of the chromium grants. And yes, there is uh, still time to do that, and they're doing that at this time. But we're working with the state. They wanted to get some of it done. So um, we drilled the well that was called the Yellow Jacket well that was drilled a number of months ago. That, even though it was for arsenic, it was part of the chromium research also. So it, it's ongoing, and they gave us money through the arsenic grant for the chromium, and we're also applying for the chromium grants. So we have applied for it because I, the way I understood it, there was not, we didn't have to match funds. This was a outright. Correct, correct. And what happened was is we applied, well, before I came on, there was an application for, for the grant, right? And then the state had changed something, and we fell through the cracks with the state. And then we said, wait a minute, you know, you changed on us. He said, okay, okay. And this was the state saying, okay, okay, we're going to put it as part of the arsenic grant, and then we're reapplying for the chromium grants. And so it's actually a two-step process. First, you apply for grants for the study and the engineering. And then after that, then you, you get the grants for the actual construction and implementation. So we're still at the engineering part of it. And they actually were going through um, the engineering part of it with them of what our ideas are. Um, one of them was the yellow jacket well, well of actually blending it with some AVAC water and with our own water. But also there's been some new, some new science and some new ways of doing it where you actually filter it through different types of mediums. And uh, as long as the expense is down, you can clean the chromium six or the hex hexavalent six from from the water. Also, there's different types. So we're looking at what's going to be the the cheapest and also the most effective. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. For 13th special board meeting minutes. So moved. We want to take one and two together. Okay. Move on both. Move on both of them. Second. Second. Ed made the motion, then a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Consent calendar. Mr. Curtin, I make a motion. Oh, you did? He did. Oh, you did already? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Second? Second. Okay. Ed made the motion, only second. All in favor? No, no, I want to discuss a little bit. I thought you were going to discuss two. No, no, two I can discuss, but oh, today's one's just a couple of questions. Uh, I noticed that we have an Edison bill pay on 3179 35th Street West is $1,400. Don't we have solar panels? Yes. And we still have a $1,400 bill? Yes. The reason for that is when the solar panels were put in, the, before I was here, the logic on that is, is that you pay a certain amount, but it's going to be over 20, 25 year period of time. The logic then is that Edison will keep on going up and up and up and up, and the the panels will stay the same. We pay I don't know what it is about four or five thousand dollars a month, close to it on the, sure on the solar panels. And so that in the long term, by the time you get more towards the twenty year time, you're saving saving money. But as you know, in the budget we put in for an, uh, and I contacted some uh, consultants that are going to come in and look at our contracts, look at our solar panels. 
Uh, one of the questions I have is we're not even supposed to touch them, and they're dirty. Who washes them? Right? I mean, because we're not supposed to touch them. So they're, they're probably not as efficient. So there's a lot. This consultant's going to come in that you guys approved and going to look at all our energy costs, look and see if we're getting what we're supposed to, and look how we can save money and maybe even put more solar in. So, yes, it's something that we're looking at all the ups and downs. <laughs> and it occurs, we only have, what, well, eight or nine over 57 on two gas flow roads? That's well nine. And is that the primary well? Well eight and well nine combined. Well nine is our largest producing well. It's 10000 a month for Edison? Correct. Is, is that something we added some sort of uh, either a windmill or a solar to that would be able to bring that It down? has solar there currently. <laughs> that the entire yard there is filled with solar panels. So that's the cost with the solar panels. They also are uh, pumping more at night, right? No, we tried that and it didn't it didn't show any savings. It didn't? No. It's a different rate at night. It is, but we also have to pay the man hours to have somebody turn on and off the pump at night, so it almost evened out. We can't do that by automatically just put uh, stuff. Somebody somebody has to turn it on and monitor I think it. There, I think there's a pretty good rate difference. It wasn't. It wasn't a noticeable use. difference. Time to use. Well, if you have to use person mode, man, yeah, we're just gonna pass it But we do have an agreement with Internoc, which is a time of use program where they will request a shutdown, and we get refunds at the end of the year. And our average, I believe Brad could probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I think over the last five years, it's averaged about four thousand dollars a year, is the rebate we get with that. Well, that's okay. We're looking at all all aspects of the. Year. And, and the windmill, my first uh, looking into it over the period of time is that we can't have a windmill here because of the fly zone from the base, but I'm still researching it. 210 Street West would probably have one. I guess it's the less of your folks. I think it's fly zone. Yeah. Long Road is out of the fly zone. Should be. Yeah, it is. And we have property up there, there's tanks up there, we can put it up there. Yeah, we're, we're still researching. You know, a lot of these big companies, they have a, a representative or someone come in, and they go through all that time of use, and they put something in that automatically controls all that. Well, that's why we have the energy consultant. We look at all aspects. We look at our pumps at the sewer plant. We look at everything to see how we can save them. And, and, and can we get a generator for the water coming back down to take work? <laughs> uh, no. And so uh, we already checked out the science on that. You can't do that. Uh, the um, the consultant that's coming that, that will be coming in the two that I contacted I made sure that it wasn't a consultant that was selling something because there's a lot of consultants that will come in and talk to me about energy but they want to sell me something this is one they just get paid whatever whatever comes out comes out it could be good bad ugly they could say you guys are doing a great job or they can say you guys are doing a horrible one. this is how you can fix it they're not selling this at all. okay so then your question I just had one more. Uh, we pay 32000 to TEI for regional arsenic compliance and recycled water. We're getting reimbursed on the arsenic compliance for sure? Yes. And recycled water would be reimbursed as well? Uh, no, not on the recycled water. There's some other grants that they've applied for. The, the GEI contract is very complex. I'm coming things back and forth. We can put a spreadsheet together for you. And you can see that. But the majority of what GEI does is now under the grants. And some of the work that we needed as an agency, we were able to, like the MSR that's going to be coming to you soon, the MSR was actually, rather than we us paying like $60,000 to do it, it was incorporated as part of the arsenic grant because it has to be part of the LAFCO process. Okay, and then we charged $2,200 for AAA quality services in Fresno. I have, I have to research that for you. That's all I have. Uh, questions there? Public comments? LAFCO sent us a request that they're taking uh, nominations from us um, that will, um, whoever you guys nominate will write a paragraph about themselves and we'll forward that to LAFCO and then LAFCO is going to put up the balloting process and, um, and uh, we move forward like that. As you know, LAFCO is the, you know, one of them that we're going through you know, the local agency's formation. Public comments? So we nominate someone, is that what we would do? If you'd like. Would you be interested, Mr. Wallace? Anybody else interested? Does it need to be a board member or you or what? 
Uh, it didn't. I don't think it says. Do you have a letter? I mean, I don't. I don't think it specifies. Do you have the general manager? No. That'd be good. He don't want to. Yeah. Nomination special district representative position allowed for commission term ending 2018. Process for conducting mayor. Please submit blah 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 blah. Yep. Please submit a short bio for your nominee. Um, no, it doesn't say who it has to be. It's it's like, it's like, it's like Brock, but he's our planner. Right? This, this, no, I, I can't afford Brock, Brock to go. Uh, 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 he could drive the he could drive the sweet Sue. I can't drive sweet Sue. This is going to be a lot of other people. You know, districts, right? uh, I believe so. Yeah, it didn't really, it didn't really go into details. It just says ballots will be sent by certified mail. Will include eligible persons nominated, but it doesn't, it doesn't have much more of the balloting and who it is. <coughs> like you know, the last time that we did something like this too. But well, I'll be talking to Bakersfield and requires you stop by the Keen store and look at that. I'll give nobody else wants it. Okay. I'm nominated Al. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You're not going to vote no, Al? No. His wife's not voting either. So, anybody there has a comment? What did you, you want to take uh, reporting? Or we take some of the information? Yeah. That would be a smart idea. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so um, I put together a spreadsheet for you, and there's some back there for the public, especially for the Rosemont News there. Uh, I got it. Thank you. Got one, John? Okay. It's a little bit more than what we sent you in the email. Yes. So how the spreadsheet goes across is that each of the districts are, are there, the annexations. It was the total amount of ballots. Now that's what were mailed out. And remember, this isn't people who live there. These are property owners. So they might be in Los Angeles. They might be in West Virginia. Who, who knows where they might be? They, or they could be living in the house themselves. Um, but then if you look at total EDU, there's a district that changes, right? And that's because the EDU, the ballots are weighted. So when you have a larger piece of property that's commercial, you get more votes. You get your vote per EDU because you're going to be taxed per, per EDU. So that's the only one that changed. So when you look at it, that the total ballots received back, like in that district, which is 2016-13, uh, there were 28 ballots received and the vote was 9 to 43.64. And that's only because, because one was weighted uh, 25, I think 25.64 is what it was. Let me do the math real quick here. Uh, 43.64 So one, one, one uh, piece of property was weighted by 25.64. Remember, uh, it, uh, it multiplies the EDUs by every you know three units and you know uh, living units per acre, and it multiplies out of how many acres, and so so that's why the vote looks different. The, the actual the actual vote itself uh, was 19 votes no and nine votes yes, but one vote counted as 25.64 votes. So that's how it is. So you have, um, and then I put the percentage per received. So each of the districts, it runs from, you know, close to 35%. All the way down, there was one district, which is uh, 35, that had 22, re 22 pieces of property, and only one ballot came back, and that ballot was a no one. But that was the last time you sent out the ballots, or, well, not this board, but Mr. Wallace was on the board, but the other board sent out the ballots. That was a no also, it was a no vote. One zero. It was a dis I don't know what the vote was, but it was a it was a no vote on that district last time. Also, so maybe people just got like, hey, I already voted once. I already voted no. I'm not going to do it again. Don't know what the reason were the ballots weren't. But this is what you do know. These are the numbers in front of you. And then Mr. Uh, Landsgard had some uh, some ideas or recommendations that he wanted. That way, that's the reason we did the research for him and put it on the agenda. Do you want to do public comments first? Oh, I'm not sure how long it takes me. I might be able to answer some of my questions. I can't hear you. She wants to be able to answer some of my questions. Okay. Put together a little. Uh, thank you very much for putting that, compiling all that stuff. I really appreciate you guys putting the work together on that. That's information we need to be able to make a, a good decision. And Are you handing this out to the board? Yes. Can you make copies so we can give it to the public? And basically what I printed, you're going to read it to you. 
to address the failed street lighting district. You want to wait until they get copies? Sure. Okay. You got to read what. Well, before I get to that, let's go over the. the you, everybody has one of these. Uh, and one of the things uh, we, we needed to do was address was you know to get a list of these so, so people can make an informed decision. Uh, as you as you know, I serve on the Rosa Municipal Advisory Council as well. The issue was brought up to the Rosa Municipal Advisory Council. There were some different homeowners from different districts were asking, "What do you do?" And realistically, they need to know what to do. If you're not happy with your streetlights potentially going out, what do you do? Well, you can petition us. Everybody has the First Amendment right to petition their public officials. It could be one person. We'll have some influence, certainly. But petition, we'll need to figure out here tonight, but I'd like to have some direction, if not a policy, that uh, states, well, what is the threshold limit that we want before we're going to take action on putting out to another vote? And how much, <clears throat> because it costs so much to have an engineering done, so much legal done, all this other stuff done, to get it on the ballot again and mail it out, and the people need to know what it's going to cost to do that, number one. Number two, they need to know there is a cost. Number, and face it, if you're facing it, if you live at 50th Street West in Iron, you can put up your own street light, and that takes care of the problem if you want a street light, uh, without putting a $1,200 bill on your tax bill. But if you're living in, t in a town where you need the lights, you might say, well, look, we, can, we got 22 people all together, we can put it on there, we can make it work. It's not going to be that more expensive. But people can make an informed decision. For example, in, we have a total of nine failed districts, but four of them failed by one vote, or two votes. Uh, the two by one, 2016-4 is 14 yes, 16 no. 2016-6 was 3 yes, 4 no. 2016-14 was 4 yes, 5 no. And 26-35 was 0 yes, 1 no. And then 2016-40 was 4 yes, 5 no. And those, as you scratch your head and you say, okay, and then there's some that were like 1 to 4 out of 37. 5 to 14 out of 87 and 4 to 7 out of 58. So all those potentially could have a lot of people saying, you know, with a very few numbers, you just add it up. So if I have 11 people petitioning that in the 4 to 7 district, for example, saying we want to have a vote and we're going to vote yes this time, we're going to make sure we're going to vote, maybe that's something we need to look at. That would only be 20, that'd be 18.9 percent, 97 percent of people petitioning, but that's as many people as voted all together. Uh, we need to. I don't think it's coming to the number. I think it's a policy matter, and because the First Amendment very basically says you have a right to petition, we should listen. Well, any, on, 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 on anybody can anybody can petition, right? But that doesn't mean that sets the threshold for any action. And I don't know that we. I think we should kind of look at it. Are they petitioning? Are they doing that? No, because they don't know that they can. So one of the things that uh, uh, I asked Mr. Smith to do, he's done, I guess, uh, is to. Number one, hold off on telling Edison that we like you. until we send a letter to the to the losing district homeowners telling them that they're both in the district and the number of each voters in the potential district and the cost that was rejected. I'm going to send them a copy of this little sheet here. But also send them a, a, additional information that says, uh, you know, if you want to revoke, we don't know exactly how much it costs, but we can give you an estimate. That's possible without asking an engineer for an estimation. <coughs> Based on the past, this is how much it cost us. And this is based on the past, is how much we spent on legal. Based on the past, is how much we spent on mailing or publishing, that type of thing. So that they know what it costs, roughly. And say to them, okay, if you want to change the result, you're welcome to change the result. But you're going to have to hear, or you're going to have to send something in writing to us saying that you are interested in changing the result. It needs to be more than just one of you. I think you need to talk to some of your friends and neighbors. In the district, you're making if you're, if you're if you're gonna go next door and say, Hey, do you own the house? Yeah. Are you interested in having the street lights back on? Well, yeah. Give them like 30 days to put get put together something that says we're interested in doing that. I checked with Ron and I understand that the number of street lights that are involved here roughly cost us about thirty three hundred dollars 
over six months to keep on. Is that right? Uh, for 90 days, it's about $1,500. Okay, so three thousand. We want to go over the costs and everything, and, uh, and, and some of the things that Paul and I have talked about. But it's not. But it's uh, it, 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 as far as what we have to do as a board. Is, uh, obviously, that's, that's not a whole lot of money as far as that goes. But at the same time, we don't have a whole lot of money to work with it with our discretionary funds that we have from the capital uh, tax. But we can obviously. I think we have enough there. Is that right, Brad? Well, I, I, can, I can discuss that on, on the on cost and things. I have the spreadsheet. One of the things that you have to be clear to do if you send up a notice, you cannot tell the people that if you petition us, then we will do a revote. No. You have to say that you could, you will consider it, unless the board is going to take an action today that if you have any petitions come in. But the um, then you're going to have to tell them the cost, right? So there is going to be a cost of mailing to these um, districts, and that's that small amount of postage. I just did a quick, a quick estimate. To keep the lights on for 30 days is about 500 bucks from ad valorem money. Okay, but in reality, um, you have another. You have to do a, another engineer's report. They'll take the old one, but no engineer is going to say take what Shirley's company did and say, "Oh, I'm just going to take that." You know, no, they're going to do the research and they're going to do the numbers and everything, and that is going to cost us. Uh, legal fees were estimated anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars to go everything like that. So you're looking at probably around thirty thousand dollars plus to do uh, to keep the electricity on and do a revote, do redo a Prop 218. Uh, the problem with thinking about this in the future is that uh, this year, just rough estimates. You know, we did well rough, meaning we did a rough budget and everything of the of the ad valorem money. Right now, the board has basically allocated all the ad money to the park and the pool. There's only around twenty-one thousand dollars this year, so. But we could add to work with. Correct. Okay, so we can't work with. That's, I guess that's the, the main point. And, right, and with the estimates, if these districts got revoted, there's not enough money to do it. Well, the other issue is though, you know, hundred bucks a light. Hundred lights that cost you ten thousand to turn it back on, so we might as well just leave them on for now for five hundred dollars. Tell me, tell me how the people, tell the people have a chance to respond and say, you know what? I think I can go knock on three doors. And I think I could change. I think there, there would be a change, and and that there would be an economy of scale. For example, oh, I've got the five districts that are either one or I've got five districts that are either one or two. If, if uh, the engineering, if you engineer for one district, obviously it's a little bit more expensive, but if you spread it out over five, it's less expensive, I imagine, right? Cor correct. And, and, but, but then what you're going to have to do when you do the notice and you tell them if they read it, if, if you want to give them the information of the, the votes, right, which I think is good, they, they didn't know what happened, and that their lights, you know, say their lights could be shut up in 30 days, you can petition, you know, the board, you know, that something else may be done, but they have to know. The majority of all these, except for I think it's uh, District 6, all of these voted no last time. So if you're going to do a third revote with them, they have to incur the cost of the first vote, they have to incur the cost of the second vote, and then they have to incur the cost of the third vote. So that first year they're going to pay for those lights are going to be a lot more expensive than it was the first time they did. And that's the case in eight of the nine districts. There's only one district. There's only one district. I think that's six that voted yes last time and voted no this time. So this would be a third vote. And and like I said, you know, as you move forward, I, I agree with the notification and agree with this. But at this point, staff staff can't recommend uh, going forward with a, a third vote because there's. There's no money, you know, you can't use the LL82 money because that's, you know, that's allocated to the people who voted yes. You can't take a loan because there's no revenue stream. These people have voted no twice. So if you take a loan, it's like going to the bank and saying, I want to buy this house and now go get a job. Well, right? It's the well, same well, thing. The bigger issue, so all we have left is ad valorem money and that's all we have. We got 21000 in ad valorem money. If we need to, that sounds like it's enough to put together legal fees and the engineering fees if we had to. The bigger issue here is public safety. If enough people in our area are interested in, in, in having that, they want a petition, they want to look at taking that burden on, then I don't have any problem with them letting them vote. That's, that's, Prop 218 is definitely not perfect. And, uh, and, and the Prop 218, when it comes to benefit that, that is attached to property, the way the voting is, 
is I disagree with. But it is a vote, and that's it is a vote. If it's up to franchises, and, and certainly we're, we're trying to follow the law, especially when it comes to voting, that's very important. Public safety is very important. And I think an informed public is even more important. Absolutely. So if, they, if we send a letter saying, here's a spreadsheet you should be interested in, there's another fact you need to be interested in, it's the lights in your district, unless they're peripheral lighting or shared on Landauer Street, they're, they're going off. And the, uh, and if you're going to uh, wish to have a lawn, it's going to cost you this X number of dollars. Now, it's going to be cost prohibitive. You can always go over down and see, you know, I can go to Carl's Harbor and get my own, my own little lamp <coughs> for a lot cheaper. <coughs> then they're welcome to, do, to, to make that. Or, or any hardware. Right? Carl's Harbor is still now. I'm kidding. But, but, but seriously, you, you, can get your, you can go online and buy your own system right. set up if you want. And that gives them the option, though, that they need to be informed, they can make up their minds economically, uh, policy-wise, the whole nine yards. Yeah, we wouldn't send the spreadsheet, we wouldn't make the letters, you know, in... No, I think they should have a copy of the spreadsheet. No, they're not going to have a copy of the spreadsheet, they're going to have the numbers that relate to them. If you send somebody just a spreadsheet like this, it would confuse a voter. Okay. Okay. And say, in your area, these many property would be done, not like this, but done in layman's right. terms so they understood what the vote was. I think one of the other things the board needs to take into consideration, I'm going to read some numbers to you starting from the very top. In the top, it was 87 ballots were sent out. 20 ballots were returned, 67 people did not vote. 67 ballots did oh, it was not vote. It was 30. Yeah, five, five, seven. 30 was returned. So 57 people, 57 property owners did oh. not vote. That's correct. So only 34.48% <coughs> of the ballots were sent out were returned. And that's the second highest number returned, though. Okay. Yes, that's the second highest number, correct. All right, then 32 didn't vote on the second line, 25 didn't vote, 68 didn't vote, 0.36 didn't vote, 24 didn't vote, 47 didn't vote, 21 didn't vote, and 21 didn't vote. Correct. I think they've told us what they want. And this is the second time they bought the vote. Yes. Except, like I said, for, for number six, that was the only one, but we have, you know, but... I haven't heard anything from anybody on, on district on district. And the prices went up. They're probably not going to vote yes. Yeah, but I think what, what's important is that they're able to make they're able to make a they if, already if, have if, if, if you will if you vote with 13 percent of the people, for example, or 4.55 percent uh, is making the decision, that's fine. But all I want to do is make sure that if they're interested, they want to, what they want to know at the RMAC is, well, well, what can we do? Well, what you can do... I think he's going to take care of that, right? What you can do is you can petition our board, and if you have a good case, we'll listen. <coughs> that's, 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 that, that's, but they need to know that they can do that. You're going to mail them out, right? I, I, if, the, if the board's direction, I will mail out uh, notices to all these properties and say that this was the vote, and this is the second time there was a vote, and your lights are going to be turned off on this date. Um, well, we don't, we don't turn the lights up. We'll, we'll let Edison know Edison, on this day. Well, today. Edison, yeah, Edison's going to pull the lights. After this day, we're going to let Edison know, whatever. Yeah. You still want to talk? Yeah. And staff and the board would agree with everyone that this method of the Prop 218, the way it's done, I don't think it's fair. I think the legislature should change it. But us as, a, as an agency, we have to follow the state law. And, and I don't agree with the way the state law is set up uh, on the way they vote. It, uh, it doesn't make sense to me, but there's a lot of some things that come out of Sacramento that don't yeah. make sense I mean, to like, me. There's only two, two votes. I know uh, two homeowners that didn't vote right now that would change their vote right now and make sure they vote to where we did pass, because then it would at least be 1660, so how would that happen? 1660 is a pass, right? It's a pass. It's a majority protest. It's a majority protest. Okay. So that 16 to 16 would pass. But like I said, in order to do that, then, you know, there would have to be some kind of petitioning the people would bring here and everything, and this board would have to decide whether you reach that threshold uh, to do it again, because you could have maybe, I mean, Mr. Lansgard said maybe bring, if you get 16 people, but then maybe the next vote, maybe 25 of them say, hey, wait a minute. I really don't want this name. I thought, oh, no. 
and you know there might be more. No, you can't. You cannot roll the dice and think that just because you get two more voters that you're going to win on that one because you might have more people. Some of the yes votes might not vote yes this time, and some more people might vote no. Oh it, yeah, you they can't. Their property there's no, there's no crystal ball, right? There's right. no crystal ball. But you take out our lives, there goes our property valuation way down. And there's no. It is an old neighborhood. We do not have many lights over in that neighborhood. We're looking at ten lights in our neighborhood. Now you have on this zone. You change the zoning. I want to know with Glendower, you have east and west. One side of the street voted yes. One side of the street voted no. Mm -hmm. How is that? You get all the lights are on the no side. Are you going to take all those lights out? Turn no, out? no, we decided not to because the people that voted on the yes side was getting their benefit from that from those lights. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places throughout the throughout those neighborhoods where there's a light and there's a no vote across the street but a yes vote there. Mm -hmm. So some people are doing better. It's not it's not a perfect exact science, but okay. it's the way that the state has set it up for us to do and and, and so we're okay. just we're yeah, trying to follow that. Because I don't want the lights out. Well you can you can call me anytime during the week and stuff and I can I can tell you how to Petition the, the board if you need okay. to. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other public comment? If you name if you want to, you don't have to. Deborah Lewis. I guess I don't completely understand. I see the total ballots that went up like in that column and the ones that was received back. And then I understand the percentage. But then the yes and the no. How many how many Will be turned off. Right. I think I think we have about thirty six lights. Thirty six street lights are going to be turned off in the different neighborhoods. Everything's voted by zone. So each of those zones, if you look at the engineers' report, has a different amount of street lights per zone. I mean, some zones only have like maybe five lights or four lights, and then others have eight lights. Um, and so every zone voted for themselves. And it's like, even though that many ballots go out, it's the same thing, you know, in the election that we're having in November. There might be, you know, 160,000 voters that are registered to vote in Antelope Valley, but if only one person goes to the polls, that's the only vote that's, that. yeah, that's the only vote that's going to count. It's just hard to believe that people re uh, streets are going to be dark. Yep, and in same. Rosamont, that's going to be darker than dark. That's going to be darker than it was in Louisiana. So something needs to be done because not only will your value, your property value depreciate, mm -hmm. your safety, anything can happen. And it's not going to make it better for Rosamont. No, absolutely, and I agree with you. And when we sent out the ballots, we sent out the notifications, uh, I made sure this time that a big bold lettering it said warning your streetlights could go off and explain the voting thing and and unfortunately the legislature has set this up as a democratic process <coughs> even though you might agree with it might lower the values or the crime would be the people decided whether they were going to be taxed for something or not and and, and that's how the legislature set it up so th these these districts according to democracy and the way the vote went voted to not pay for street lights. And, and unfortunately, I might agree with you on other things, but our hands are sort of tied. Uh, we can't really pay for, you know, when the people aren't paying for taxes. Like, we, we'd like to keep the pool open and, and spend money on that, but uh, we don't have any, we well, don't have enough taxes. Lights for lights in the yeah. pool. Absolutely. All right. Uh, yeah, we can notify, we can notify the residents that were known, tell them what the votes were, and I can have them, if you, if you have any questions, uh, you know about petitioning this or anything, then you can call me. No, no, no. They, they, they have the right to petition. Yeah, they have a, they have a right to petition. They can call me, and I can tell them what it's going to take. Okay. Now let me yes. ask you a question. Sure. Give us a ballpark figure. If this board wanted to go back and do another 218, what's the total cost going to be? On on this whole package, <clears throat> um, I'm estimating around thirty thousand dollars. Is what for the the engineers, the engineers? That's for the engineers report, the legal fees, the mailing, the doing the whole Prop 218 over it. Okay. it is, I'm, I'm estimating low because, you know, sometimes it becomes protracted like it did last time. So, but we have a new engineer on board, and, and so hopefully we'll get everything done fast. And they, they're not just going to take um, Shirley's last report and go and rubber stamp it. Because they're saying that. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to go through it again. So. Jim, do you have any questions? Oh, I'm looking at we've done it twice. 
we've gone through it. The people have spoken twice on it. This board's done it once. And this board's done it once. But it's no different than any other le election. They uh, go through, they don't get to go back and redo the election. Just like the November 8th, we're going to have an election. If it don't turn out the way some people like, we're not going to have another presidential election, at least for four years. So we need to look at it carefully because we're going to be spending the people's money to do it. I personally think we shouldn't look at another vote. How about sending the notices out that they want to send out? Showing the people like I suggested something that wouldn't tie the, the board's hands in the right. future. It wouldn't say anything. Is it, it's okay to, to, the more information you give out is fine. Just say, give them a warning okay. that in 30 days, you know, your lights are probably going to go out because the vote was this. This is how many ballots went out. This is what the mm -hmm. votes were. If you need any more information, you can call the general manager. They can call me and we'll see who calls and, and what they ask for. And, 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 you know, let them have a right to petition if they want to, but they, but they need to have. But well, don't stop. To turn off the lights, move forward with it, notifying the people, giving them the date they're going out. I, I yeah, that's, that's fine. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I know. Just so you know, I because this was going to be in front of the board, they were going out this past week, and I, I delayed it with Edison. And so then we'll just we just have to re notice. Can we give them a date, sir, that we're done. We're washing our hands. Of we'll the, we'll the call Edison. Edison. Yeah. We'll, we'll notify Edison and say, unless unless we give you further directions, you know, this is and what Edison's going to do is first they're going to pull the light bulbs, right? So everybody's lights are going to go out. And if it didn't wake up anybody with all the plethora of notices they've already had, then the lights going out will give them, and then they might call, and then we'll get more notification. But but they're not going to extract the polls for what did they say about 30 more days, 60 more days? Because they got to get work crews out there. So um, they first just take the light bulbs out, and then then they'll come back later on. And uh, okay, and I got a question on pulling the polls. Yes, sir. All right. What I recall is the developers paid for those polls and had them put in. Yes. All right. How did Edison end up with the polls? Because just like um, just like what we do is when you got homes that are being built, we make the developer pay and then we make them install the lines that come from the main up to the meter and they install the meters. But they are ours then. They get they're given to us. So we own the infrastructure and Edison owns that infrastructure. Like we own the polls. It's dedicated. dedicated. Edison owns the polls. Yeah. The only difference is Edison is not a public entity. So yeah, it's like corn the sidewalk, but you board your loans in the county. Correct. Correct. Okay, yeah, you so guys, are you, 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 you in favor of this? Or? Well, this, yeah, the one, well, the one, I guess the one last reason for sending out the letter, even though it's been voted down twice in some areas and one in one in the other area, is that it's penny wise and pound foolish not to do it that way because if they are going to the lights at $100 a light, then it makes it even more prohibitive to get back on because they're going to have to pay for that. And I think that uh, I think it would be a lot less expensive to send. I, I think we understand all that. I think we're going to win that several times. I don't know if you feel it. I know this is, I don't, you know, I think we should send a notice and tell them that, you know, hey, your lights are going out. I do too. If they have any questions, just call me. Oh, I should think you have more information in the video. All in? Yeah. Dennis? Send them a notice. Okay. Okay. Give them a call. That's the direction. I don't think we need a vote. I just, I have a direction. It's consensus. Talking about was the package that was going to the board for Aqua. And one of the things that was in that package that we discussed on the phone was the budget that they're proposing. And one of the things that uh, was consensus that we were sending was that uh, the rates <coughs> to the member agencies need to be reduced. And so that was taken there, and that was the board met last Friday, and I don't have any idea of, I wasn't privy to that board meeting. So. And we, we pay about 14000 a year mm -hmm. in our membership. Owen? Oh, Anything else you? No, that's it. Oh, well, records, reports, of course, you have the. Uh, we heard at the RMAC meeting of last Thursday, the third Thursday of September, uh, had surprise visitors from the Kern County Council's office. Uh, Mr. County Ryan, Council. County Council come right down there with Deputy County Council. And um, the guys did all the work on the uh, closing down the, the illegal pot shops. He gave us a report on what they're doing on that. And, and that we moving forward slowly. Uh, one of the things he mentioned is that 
The pharmacy rule applies to all the pot shops up until May. They open their pot shop after May, they're illegal totally because they were passed any resolution there. The pharmacy rules mean they can't have open a pot shop within a thousand feet of a school. And there's at least probably three or four of those that are within a thousand feet of the Rosen Elementary School. And they're working hard on the shutting them down based on that. <coughs> the uh, other thing from the RMAC is that they are having their they are hosting the candidates forum this Thursday, uh, third Thursday of uh, October, which I believe is the 20th. We're going to hear from uh, Steve Fox and Tom Lackey. We're going to hear from uh, all the people who are running for the Community Service District, Al Wallace. Are going to be here in the No, the 20th. Okay. Al Wallace, Byron Glennon, Mr. Willeford, and Mr. Vince Lett have all been invited. There's another one too, right? Yeah, Uriah is somebody, I can't remember. And then uh, also the school board candidates, there's four of them. And for the first time, the RMAC itself has four candidates running for three seats. So, Mr. Schaffner, you can be there to keep it light and keep it focused. So we'll get out of here hopefully within two, two and a half hours. But, you know, come on down and, and, uh, and hear from the candidates. Never. I always like to have you in the audience on a Thursday night in the, for the RMAC meeting. And uh, get to hear from everybody and what they're what they plan on doing if elected to office or if they remain in office, depending on the case. So, hope to see you all down there. So that's all I've got. Dennis? 43 was signed on the 29th uh, and particularly pertinent to our employees. It's an amendment to the Public Records Act. Uh, under the current law, prior to the signature, state employees and school district employees' home address and phone number were exempted from public record disclosure requirements. With this new legislation, uh, that exemption has been extended to all public employees and adds their cell phone and birthdays to the list of information exempted from disclosure. General Manager. Uh, yes, um, we had a number of meetings for the Watermaster. Uh, they are, I am now um, on the, I don't know what committee they're calling yet. The advisory. We already have, we are, <laughs> advisory. No, I'm not on the advisory committee because that's not made yet. It's the, like the executive formation committee for the advisory committee. No, the advisory committee, Ron, Ron, you left. Right. The advisory committee, 14 people have right. signed up to be the steering Committee right. of steering the advisory committee. The steering committee for for me installing uh, the master meters because we're having issues with the old Neptune reading system. So in the past month, we've installed almost 200 new master meters. That puts us at uh, 2,825 meters installed as of this morning. Um, we had eight service line leaks that were repaired, six angle stops that were replaced. We drained the pool because it's closed for the season and uh, started the washout process on that. It will be covered within the next week. Um, we had to replace a headworks pump out of the wastewater treatment plant, uh, performed 32 lockoffs for non-payment, completed our monthly meter reading, and we delivered 309 non-payment notices this morning. Thank you. Any questions? 